Um, Elvis, the first question I have for you is from a fan who recently helped you um, also sift through boots and skating equipment. And I want to know from your perspective, what is the greatest innovation that you've seen in the skating boot and in skating equipment um, since you retired from competition? Wow. Um... You I should see his old. <laughs> oh my God! Well, I, I share with you what's what's amazing I is have I have the, the boots that I had. Yeah, I have, I've still got my old boots from like '94. Oh, let's see first, them. My first, <laughs> about. first, the first quad triple ever done. The boot itself with the blade, one boot, weighed 3.2 pounds. Okay. Then I had a, another boot that I skated in. I'm not going to give the names of the boots, but I'm just. So, except the original one was called an SK boot. It was a company called SK. They made amazing skates. They were really solid. They lasted a full season, but they were cinder blocks. Three <laughs> pounds. The next boot I skated in, I did many years of shows in them. Good boot. It's on the market. 2.8 pounds. Then I started skating in another boot that was 2.2 pounds. Wow. Okay, and that, that particular boot, a lot of skaters are in. Uh-huh. And then the boot I just tried out, and I've been in for a while now. Okay, these things are 3.2 pounds. The Look at that wheel. Wow. I want to, it's ballistic nylon. And um, <laughs> they, weigh, they weigh a ton. These things are over 20 years old. And the boot, um, the boot with the carbon fiber, 1.7 pounds. A carbon fiber boot? Oh my God. Carbon fiber. It's based on um, design. The the guys that designed it, they they were their background is in speed skating. And okay. The Aura skate. And uh, these guys have come up full carbon fiber. So they didn't take the technology that already existed and then tried to rework it. They started right from scratch. Uh, they based it off of you know, carbon fiber boot from speed skating. And they, they talked to me about it and then they started working on it. They made hockey boots that are, it's hockey skates that are incredible. Like I was into them first, true hockey. And then these first skates are like, they're unbelievable. So they're, the technology now that instead of having leather, leather to ballistic nylon, which were these ones, and then now into like a carbon fiber to ch this, this material, I mean, it was really hard. Like, I couldn't wrap my head around carbon fiber because that's stuff they use in, in racing cars and things that's yeah. not very flexible. The, to have the flexibility, to have the strength, but still have the flexibility in certain parts of the boot um, is quite amazing. And the weight is is ridiculous. Like, it's almost half of what I did. Like, I wish back in the day when I was doing quad triples, quad toe, quad sal, even doing flips and lutzes, quads back in the day, if I had half the weight of the boot, it, that's insane because it's also people right. say, okay, it's still, you know, it's quite a bit of weight, but the other part about it, it's, it's so far away from my center of gravity, that weight. It's like, you know, it, it's that pendulum. It's way out there that weight. So if you lessen that weight, it makes a massive difference. So the carbon fiber that's being added in from this company is mind blowing for me. I think it's, it's probably the most, predominant change in the technology of skates and and once they perfect it and figure it out it's really gonna it's kind of like what they did when they make the clap skate for for, for speed skates when it was because of you know they couldn't get a full extension but now with the blade staying on the ice as they can lift the heel but the blade stays the same, they were destroying records and it's all technology based right so it, it, it's pretty amazing i like pretty skates <laughs> Me too. I agree. <laughs> they have to be printed. Gotta, Me too. I gotta still jump and do stuff. So whatever, whatever makes it easier. You know, she's, she's 37. I'm 48. So I just whatever makes it easier. I still train a lot. I'm very lucky that my body's still doing it, and mm -hmm. I don't have any issues. Knock on wood. Uh, it knee issues, things like that. So I stay in shape. But yeah, the, the 
to, to whatever can make it easier on the body for me doing shows uh, absolutely for jumpers for ju yeah okay. for jumpers or jumpers or baby jumps not on the triples anymore for me it's the look yeah because of skating you want them to look pretty you know you want that nice point you want that low heel you want da -da 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 -da. if they're like I don't know. Weird shape? No. Yeah, that's a hard part. I mean, no. because you can go on, and do stuff and it, it'll yeah. look It doesn't different. look the best. You know, speed skating, they don't really care. I mean, right. they're just, they, right. it's about the time. For us, the, there's a combination of the two things. But mm -hmm. they're they're working on different designs and, and it's it's starting to change the look. Or if you like the traditional look, you know, it, it, you're kind of stuck with that. But there is, there is a flip over now. There's so many skates now, that, it, designs on the market right now, you can pick and choose. But... The big thing is, is, is it's like for me over the years, since I've been riding dirt bikes and racing cars, there's so many different helmets and it depends because everyone's head is different shaped. So mm -hmm. there's a certain helmet that I like for the same thing. There's a certain design to them. There's a certain fit. Even if you get a custom boot, there's a certain way they make them. So it just depends on the, the, the way your foot is shaped. Like Gladys has a, a flatter foot. I have a high arch. So it just depends on how that is. And, and plus and, I need them beige. From the factory, and not everybody <laughs> offers that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, well, yeah, they still make uh, yeah. the white, you know. So it, it just depends, but yeah, it's it's pretty amazing the technology that they're uh, that's changing. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. that's kind of know thyself because you have to know if your goal, for example, in skating shows, if you're like I'm going to get this show because I have massive triples and I'm a jumper and like my jumps make people say wow, your boot has to sustain that but if you know i'm not getting hired for a jump <laughs> yeah. i'm getting hired for a line and a toe point like knowing the material you need like knowing your equipment mm -hmm. um our next question actually kind of has to do with that as well um this is a question for both of you and i thought gladys we'll start with you because you were the youngest lady to land the double axle in mexico correct so our next question is what's your one tip for a double axle and like maybe the best tip is the technology like having the right thing on your foot to start with but what would you say best tip for a double axle well i was known for the best double axle in mexico this is i'm gonna have to pull out a video somewhere yeah, yeah. let's put it right in the middle, middle. i'm gonna write these tips i watch myself men watch and watch and watch men jumping because okay. girls jump are smaller so, and I'm very visual so for me it was just uh videotapes and you just watch takeoff just the takeoff and then rewind and then the takeoff and then rewind but you got to understand I was the most advanced kid in my rink there was nobody else trying these jumps I had nobody to look I couldn't judge I couldn't go to the elite session and sit down and watch everybody's I was the elite session so when you're in that situation, or if you're like the most advanced kid on your ice session or whatever, or if you're from a country that I don't know, it doesn't have a lot of skaters, uh, watching videos helped me tons. And I got told by many coaches, Russian coaches included, that I was never gonna land a double axle because my single axle was tiny, but that's all I had in there. So that's what I caught, right? It was like a natural. So then I kind of had to learn to make a bigger pocket in within my single axle. So I had to really make that single axle giant so I could insert next rotation. Before, it was about higher. Um, I don't know. I know technology now teaches you to rotate. There's a lot of um, extra tools to help you rotate like you have the spinning thing on the floor right. the harness and it's all about like quick rotation back then it was well if your jump is this big you ain't gonna you know right. do two and a half. it's like your jump has to be this big so I got, I got taught to jump big so mm -hmm. that meant you know a good clean pass through so then you had to like push your body up like you had to do this in the jumps right. instead of this in the jumps mm -hmm. that's the way i teach because that's the way i learn but those are the jumps that get the goes mm -hmm. if you see it like 
compared to a jump that is like a so massive slope. That launches Which and one have do a you lot. want? Yeah. So why don't you learn to do this from the beginning? And and also it. too, it's like they they teach a lot now this pre rotation stuff, which I, I hate. Especially for flips and lutzes, I see them, they're doing quad lutzes, but really they eat like almost more than half a revolution on the takeoff. Right. And I'm like, that's true triple lutz. A true, the only one that really has a pre-rotation is the sound, the toe and the loop, right? right? So you have a pre-rotation release, but flip and lutz, like when you pick, there's a release to it. Like you look at, uh, um, I believe uh, Nathan Chen does it, is pretty good and, and uh, Han Yu does uh, a proper one, but the Russians teach it and, and they, they just pre-rotate like crazy and it's really right. not the same, you know, because they don't have the, um, the strength to go that extra half a revolution. As we know, like to get a jump and you're a quarter on the landing, just to get that, imagine if you eat that on the takeoff, it makes it easy. Yeah. So uh, to get the launch in the loft and then the combination of getting the rotation so you can make it delay a little bit, but you also want to rotate on the way, you want to rotate on the way up, but not on the ice. Right. You want the, the really good jumps you'll see, they just start when they release from the ice and then it rotates up instead of the rotation on the ice and go, you know, right. I like that technique. Um, it's cheated. I'd be a terrible caller because everyone doing triple lets, triple <laughs> flips, triple lets, I would go, oh yeah, triple loop. And they'd be like, why? That's not a triple. I'm not, it's a, they did five triple loops in the program. I'm sorry. It's a triple loop. I get fired <laughs> in the competition because I, I'd be like, guys, it's not a triple lets. It's not a triple flip. Where Gladys, her, her launch for the axle is beautiful because her left foot releases so nice. She has a nice little skid on the end, and it's really quick, and it you snaps right in. edge and off. Yeah. It's not edge so, and like... Yeah, so it's not a okay. delay. It's not a big delay, and then you work it on the way down. She has a nice snap off the takeoff, and that's um, what she ended up getting. The other thing beautiful. is I know a lot of kids train axle on the floor. Mm -hmm. I was never really a floor jumper. It's very trendy uh, right now. Like right. I plotted that on Instagram. Right, right. I, you do it on the ice, and if you don't want to bust your bum, because you will fall a lot, you'll have bruises on your hips, mm -hmm. trying to uh, do single axles. Do single axles, mm -hmm. and then start single axles, and then as soon as you land, you land like in a loop position, and then do like traveling loops or do a backspin or, you know, try to teach the body to continue the rotation. And, and a good check position, because she you can see her left arm is it's yeah. in front. So really good check position on the on the landing. But for me, people yeah. are like, there's this thing on online social media, everyone's like, hey, Elvis, everyone's doing jumps. Can you do a jump off the ice? Because it's it's this jump thing. Right, I, right. I can't do a double axle off ice. <laughs> I can do, I can do yeah. maybe, maybe a single axle. I hate leaping off ice mm -hmm. because the timing is completely it's different. different. It's different. completely yeah. different because you don't have you don't have this glide. It's mm -hmm. like this example, it's like a pole vaulter. If you're running and then you take the the pole vault and you pop it right in the pocket and jump, you get the launch. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. ice, it's easy. No matter where you step, nothing's sliding. Okay. So you have you just step and release. It's e it, when I watch the kids do it, if they get a good timing, it's easy. What makes it difficult on the ice is the sliding. You have to hit that toe at the exact moment. So you have to stop the slide. Then you have to release. The timing mm -hmm. is completely different. You have a whole foot off the ice. Off ice, you have the whole foot to do that. As soon as you step on the ice, you have to glide. You're going much faster. And then you have to, that one little moment on the toe to stop it. Then mm -hmm. you got to release. I try, I, for years I tried jumping off ice and it did nothing but screw me up. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying there's no exercises you can do off ice. No. There are, there are, you can, you can, uh, you know, get your back, your back muscles, you know, to stay back stronger, mm -hmm. put a bit of repetition with elastics. It's easy. It's mm -hmm. not expensive. Um, there's a lot of exercises of jumping on a little step, sort of like a going up a step or a bench or a box. So you can practice that kick you know you step and up the up up the box and then up the box and then you can do an exercise rotate and go down the box so mm -hmm. you can do the axle up and down right. so there are a few things that you can do but mainly is that axle needs to be huge so you right. can put extra revolution in there <laughs> Well, and like what I've seen, especially from you guys in shows, is the most consistent jumpers are the ones who understand 
the biomechanics of like their own body mm -hmm. jumping mm -hmm. and who understand like the quick twitch like mm -hmm. you were saying all this like getting to the toe when you want to get there and jumping when you want to jump yeah. and I yeah. feel like so much of social media has made and I think this is in part because of like the emergence of quads in these tiny junior girls that have that pre-rotation that you were talking about mm -hmm. but it's so trendy mm -hmm. to like the tiny quick spinning off the ice, like it makes great social media content. And it's interesting to see the way skating is kind of pulling towards that. And like, it, it'll be interesting to see how it changes technique, but also like what will be technically, like, is there gonna be a divide in the skating world? Is like, no, that's not a quad. Even mm -hmm. if they say mm -hmm. it is with their pre-rotation, it's like you said, it's not a clean quad. So kind of, Judge, you've got to nail people on it because it's not a true when it goes like a double axle we've been doing triples double axles two and a half revolution two mm -hmm. and a half revolution. a triple toe and triple sow is not really three it's really two and three quarters kind mm -hmm. of really it's not full three same with the triple loop triple loop a little bit more than a sow and toe but it's not truly three triple flip and triple lutz are truly the only two that are three revolutions if you take off without pre-rotation mm -hmm. then you get to three and a half lastly Gladys this was a question uh it was in your question box on Instagram but I think it would again be interesting to hear from both of you especially because I know that you've been choreographing for Elvis for his show work now since I think 2010 am I correct yeah so somebody had asked do you like using hip-hop music on the ice and what is your favorite genre to choreograph to doesn't matter um i can use hip-hop maybe i don't i'm not an expert on it so if i'm presented with a piece of music that my body naturally doesn't know how to move to because you gotta understand when you're choreographing for somebody you gotta choreograph the best for that person not yeah. the move that you like or the moves that you can do oh look at me i can do this move and it's amazing and then i put it on him and he's like <laughs> I drive her crazy. and then i drive I, her nuts sometimes i have like one little chunk of music we do 10 different movements because right. maybe my hips are open and i can do like a really nice inner bower and then he's like my hips don't open like i can't i can't go there or i can't do this or I feel weird, or I don't like my left in front of my right. It has to be the right in front of the left. But then if we do that, the whole sequence of steps, now I gotta change because the ordering is different. So mm -hmm. when you're choreographing, you gotta think on what is the best for the person you're choreographing. Mm -hmm. Not what are the cool moves that you can do? Because right. maybe they cannot do them. So I have to do a lot of research I'm not a professional dancer. So if you give me a hip hop music, I would go and look at videos and look at videos and look at videos of like professional hip hop dancers and be like, okay, that move, I think we can utilize and maybe we can like change a couple of things and then we'll go and try it on the ice. And then it's a constant fight. The music, my body loves to move and the easiest for me to choreograph is upbeat, happy music. Um, I didn't study ballet. I'm not a ballerina. Uh, I learn a lot of my lines and a lot of my moves through shows, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a competitor, I always focus more on the technical aspect than in the artistic aspect. Plus we didn't have all the numbers that we have now. Uh, it was a 6.0 system. Right, right. So that, once being in shows, it changed my artistic view because I was able to maybe skate to different pieces that I wouldn't chose for myself. I, they were imposing me. So that there were movements that I was forced to learn, but then I discovered that my body liked doing them mm -hmm. or they suit me. I was like, oh my God, I never thought this piece of music would create these feelings of whatever. And I actually like skating to them. So I don't mind weird pieces of music i love drums anything with like a really hard beat that like makes your heart like pound i love that that's great because it's that. very similar we, we, <laughs> she's amazing at it because there could be a piece of music that she that we end up 
picking or it, it, it could be a show where they give us something or kind of stuck with it. She'll go and research for a while, but then she also has to figure out like she knows herself, but she has, she's got to know me now the way I work mm -hmm. is I'll put a piece of music on and I'll just, I'll just freeform for like an hour and I'll, and my body will just do stuff and it'll just move It moves a certain way. And I was never ballet dancer. I was never, you know, classically trained that way but my my body knows movement and it knows music and it has rhythm and it's all in there it's just you got to allow it to come out and then she'll pick certain things and then attach and go that looks good on you that looks good on you let's do this here is an idea i have let's put this in i saw this let's see if this works and we it's a mishmash together and that's when it that's when it works really well there's frustrating days where you know it, 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 she'll try a couple different things but my body's just like nope 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 today nope. not doing that <laughs> right <laughs> no and it's i think too i think it'll be refreshing for a lot of people to hear like to be a choreographer you just have to start playing just start moving yeah. start figuring out again know thyself know what you like to do and then see what other people like to do the way like finding your process of identifying who you are in skating versus who you've been told to be, we'll do that same thing for somebody else, see who they are rather than telling them who to be, and then just start playing. You just start. I don't know. Sorry, go ahead. I don't know, have 10 students having to do 10 different programs, and then they all look the same because they all have my movements. Right. <laughs> that's a Gladys choreography. Yeah, that's a Gladys choreography too. Oh, yeah, Gladys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> When I was a wrestler back in the day, and, and she always used to say, you know, because she worked with me that way. We worked for hour, three, four hours of just improv. Sometimes you'd go to the rink at like, we'd grab ice down in Philadelphia when I was there working on new programs. I, we'd get ice at like one in the morning, and we it would train like till four in the morning. It would just, because it was during that time in the of the day, um, it's very creative in the middle of the night, believe it or not. That's why I do a lot of my acting stuff because it's 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 an interesting time, and uh, all this stuff started coming out of me. And she started seeing different things. And she always used to say like regular where they the body snatchers. They just grab somebody and be like, okay, you're doing this, 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 and if it's not good, we gotta work on it. And I'm just like, no, that's not me. I used to I my body would just renege when I had someone trying to take me and make me do something that my body didn't want to do. So it had to be coming from within, and uh, and it's and it's great because it it allows that part because it's it's not about the choreographer. The choreographer is is helping mold and using that other set of eyes from external, going, yeah, this looks good, this looks good. Let's work on this. Try some of this. Sprinkle it in, and we and we work really well as a team. Yeah, there's days where it's like, Whoa. but he's but, very different to work with. <laughs> Difficult, different. I don't know. Um, if I had another client or another person uh because we're not together all the time i think they would not try a little bit more but they would challenge themselves to try to do what i want them to do right if makes any mm -hmm. sense or i'm choreographing for a big show they're normally very respectful and they're like okay boss whatever you say we do it no matter what right like then with this little monster is more like no nah. so it's hard on <laughs> there's certain th there's certain things that I will challenge myself on and think yeah I can do that and I will try everything and I'll work and I'll try different things but the thing is I know myself and mm -hmm. I've gone so much I have so many years of experience I kind of know where this road will lead I'm like nope it, it's not going to go that way right but I'll be like ooh I like that that's a new, something new and I think I can attach it to that give me a second let me play with it and then I'll play with it and be like oh it works thanks babe let's let's do this mm -hmm. but it, frustrating sometimes because she'll try it like this I'm like no nope, tried that already my body doesn't like it it won't work it's just yeah. it won't work and I'll show her and I'll try and I'll try and I'll try and it will come out and see you know it will come back to the original original idea but it, again it, it's just trial and error and that's that's mm -hmm. how you you uh you get through it From all of us here at the Edge Collective, we're so happy you're able to join us on this video today. As you guys know, we are new to this, so there are a lot of startup costs to consider. Please check out the link below uh, for GoFundMe. If you are willing and able to help, it'd be greatly appreciated.
And thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you next time.